Hey everyone, I want to show you how you can make Pong in pure C++, meaning the only thing you need is Visual Studio. And I'm going to start with an empty folder and walk you through it step by step. I'm going to do the rendering on the GPU with OpenGL, and in the end we have this simple version of Pong with this scoring animation. So I've opened this empty folder in Visual Studio, and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a game folder. And in there I'm going to create a startcpp file, which is going to be the main file that I'm going to compile. So in here I'm going to add the main function and include the Windows header file. And now I'm going to immediately set up the build script so we can make sure that everything works. And in here I create a build directory and execute the compiler. I make it a debug build and generate symbols for the debugger, and I specify that I want to compile the startspp file. In the end, I'm also linking a couple of libraries that we are gonna need later. These libraries are all part of Windows, so no need to download them from anywhere. Before we can use this build script from the command line, we have to set up the necessary environment variables. Luckily, we can just execute another batch file that is part of Visual Studio, which for my Visual Studio installation is at this path here. I'm doing this in a separate batch file because we only need to do this once in a new console. I'm adding a run script in the game folder just to start the game without switching folders. So now I can first execute the setup script, then switch to the game folder and execute the build script. And when that's done, we can see that we have created a build folder with the executable and debug symbols. And I can also now execute the run script where for now nothing is happening. So let's now start working on creating the window. To do this, I first create a new window file and I'm going to include this in the main startcpp file. So in the window file, I'm going to create a namespace called window and in there I'm going to write a create function. In here, I'm first creating the window class then I'm getting the screen width and height and use those to create a borderless full screen window. Then I get the device context. Then I define the pixel format I want to use. And then I can create the OpenGL context. Now I create the function that handles the events from Windows. The easiest way to handle them is to just delegate them to another Windows function that is going to take care of them. But in some cases, we actually want to do something with the game. For example, we want to close the window when we get a quit message, or adjust the viewport when the window size changes. Then I also create some functions we can use later to control the window. The next thing we have to do before we can actually use most OpenGL functions is that we have to bind them. So I'm calling this function here, which I'm going to create in a separate file. So I create a new folder and in there I copy two header files that contain all the OpenGL function signatures. I'm going to put a link to them in the description. Just to make this clear, there is no implementation in there. The implementing functions we have to manually bind. So I'm creating a new GL bindings cpp file and in there I include the GL header file that is part of Windows and the GL extension header file that I just copied into this folder. And that file includes the other one, so we only need to include one of them. Then here I will write the function that I'm calling from the create window function. But first I'm going to organize the includes a little bit differently. I'm going to include windows.h and the gl bindings in the window file. And I'm going to create a new core folder and move the window file there. Everything that is not in the game folder, I'm usually reusing in the next project. And the start file now only includes the window file. Now back to binding the GL functions, I just create a bunch of function pointers to all the OpenGL functions I want to use. And then I bind them with the WGL get proc address function. I can show you that the types of the function pointers are the ones you find in the header file. Now in the start file, we can call the create function and then I can create the main update loop. In this message loop, we receive all the Windows events and pass them on to the function we created in the window file. When we get a quit message, we exit the update loop and release allocated resources.
In the update loop, after we handle the Windows events, we can swap the buffers to display the next rendered image. One more thing I want to add before testing this is that I want to be able to quit the game with escape, otherwise I'm stuck with an empty window and would have to force quit out of it. So I'm creating a new input file and in there I just have a function that tells me if a key is held down. And I'm passing in a input key, which I'm defining now in a new file. And you can find which key corresponds to which number online. So back in the start file, I'm going to include these new files at the top. And then I add a condition that closes the window when I press escape. So now when I run this, we successfully open an empty borderless full screen window with a black background. And I can even close it with escape. So let's actually clear the color of the frame in the update loop and skip it if the window isn't active so that we now can actually start making the game. So let's take care of rendering now. The only thing we really have to render are rectangles. So I'm adding the vertices and indices here in an extra file. And the vertices just contain the UV coordinates. Next I create a new file and in there I'm going to create the mesh from the vertices and indices. So I'm creating the vertex buffer, index buffer and vertex array and return the handles to them. Then I also add a function to release them and a function that draws the mesh. Next I'm going to create the shaders and I'm going to put them in an assets folder and load them later from there. So in the vertex shader we have the UV coordinates from the vertices and the screen coordinates we're going to get from uniforms. In the game I'm going to have a coordinate system that goes from 0, 0 in the bottom left corner to 1, 1 in the top right corner. So here I'm converting them to normalized device coordinates. Then in the fragment shader I'm only setting a color which I'm just hard coding in here. So now I want to load these shaders at runtime. So I'm going to write a new function that loads the entirety of a file at a given path and creates and returns a buffer with the content of that file. So now I can create a shader by first loading the vertex and fragment shader from disk and then I compile and link them. And in the end I free the source code and only have the handle to the created shader program. Then I also create a function to delete the shader program and a function to bind it. So now with that being set up, I'm going to organize all the assets I want to load in a new file. So here I load and store the shader and mesh I'm going to use to draw the rectangles with. And in the start file I include all the files I just created and call the load asset function before and the release function after the main update loop. So now let's start working on drawing the ball. I'm going to define a rect which stores the position of the four corners of the ball. So I create one function that sets these values directly, meaning I'm expecting relative values here. And one function that converts pixel values to relative ones and stores those. So I first scale the pixel values depending on the screen resolution so that they appear with roughly the same relative size to the window on screen. And I'm setting 1080p as my target resolution. And I want to use a math min function here, which I'm going to create after finishing the subrect function. So now I convert the scaled pixels to relative values. And I create these two functions here to do that. And then I can store these relative values. So now let's create the math function and I'm going to make a new folder where I put all the math related files in. And I create a math file where I write all the general math functions. So I create the min function and since we're here right now, I'm going to create a couple more basic math functions that we're gonna need later. And I also add a function to get a random value. So now in the ball controller, I want to define a position and for that I'm going to create a vector2 struct. So I create a new file in the math library and add that there. And I add some constructors and overload some basic operators so I can use this more conveniently. And then I also add a function to get the length of the vector and a function to normalize the vector, which we're gonna need later. So now again, back to drawing the ball, I create a rect at the position with a size of zero. So this is basically my anchor. 
and then I extend the bounds of the rect with the subrect function. So after this, now I can bind the shader and now I have to set the uniforms. So I create a new file where I get the location of each uniform and I add a function that just takes the values from a rect and sets those. So I can call this function now and then I can draw the mesh. In the start file, I include all the files that I added and I initialize the shader bindings and call the draw function. And now when I run this, we have a square on screen. So the next step is to make it move around and bounce off the edges. So I'm adding an update function where I want to move the ball. And I define a direction the ball is moving towards. And I initialize it with a somewhat random direction that moves either mostly left or mostly right. And I also want the ball to be slower before hitting the first pedal, so the player has some more time to react. But now, in the update loop, I move the position every frame along the direction. To keep the movement speed consistent, I want to multiply this equation with the amount of time it took to render one frame. So I'm going to add a time file, and in there I store the update time and how long the game is running. And in the start file, I include that file, and in the main function, I get the start time in the beginning, which I also use as a seed. And in the update loop, I update the time values every frame. And since we're here, I initialize the ball and just said that it should move first to the right. And I call the update function before I draw the ball. In that update function, I now also add that it should inverse its direction depending on which edge it's hitting. The ball is so small and so fast that we can just check the collision with the middle point of the ball. So now when I start this, the ball is moving around the screen and bounces off the edges. So the next step is to add the pedals. So I'm adding a pedal controller and a float for each pedal. Zero means it is at the bottom of the screen and one at the top. Then to draw them, I define a rect and lerp the position to set the y coordinates. And then I can draw the mesh just like before. And in the start file, I add the include and the draw call. And when I start this, we can see the pedals. So the next step is to move them up and down. So I add two functions that adjusts a given position in a certain direction. And I call these functions in the update loop when I press W and S or up and down. So I add the update call in the main function. And when I start the game now, I can move the pedals up and down. So now I can implement having the ball collide with them. So I'm adding a function that tells me if a position is colliding with a pedal and I also return the contact position. I simplify this here by checking if the ball is behind the edge of the pedal that is closer to the center. So that means that the hitbox of a pedal is also behind the pedal. I do this because the ball moves very fast and could move from one frame being in front of the pedal to the next frame being behind the pedal. So I'm doing this simple approximation instead of something more complicated like continuous collision detection. Then in the ball controller, I'm going to call these functions and change the direction of the ball. And I also set the slow modifier to false. Now, when I start the game, the ball also bounces off the pedals. So the next thing to do is to reset the ball when it hits the left or right side. So we can do this simply by calling init again. And I can now also remove the direction change when that happens. So now when I start the game, the ball resets when reaching either side. And the base functionality of the game is complete with this. But to add at least something personal, I'm going to add a scoring animation which shows where the ball scored and focuses the attention of the player back to the center of the screen when the next round starts. So I create a new fragment shader and in there I first scale a target resolution to the actual screen size. Then I have the UE coordinates, the origin which is the point where the ball scored and the middle of the screen. And then I get the distance of the UV coordinates to the origin and the middle. And then I use those to play out the animation over time. To use the shader, I create a score shader binding, 
and I add functions to set uniforms. And then I load the shader in the assets file. And then I include the new file and create a background controller which controls the animation. So I create a score function that I can call when I want to trigger the animation. And in there I set the position and the start time. Then in the update loop I reset the animation once it's done. A start time of 0 means that the animation isn't running. So when the animation is running I create a rect across the entire screen. And then I set all the uniforms and draw the mesh. In the start file I add the include and call the update and draw function. And in the ball controller file I call the score function when the ball hits either side. I also skip updating and drawing the ball while the animation is running. And then when I run this it looks like this. So let me know what you think about the implementation. I try to make this as simple as possible. This was one of my first projects I did in C++ and I think it's a good place to start. It takes you through the window creation, it uses some basic OpenGL functions for rendering and it has a little bit of math while avoiding the more complicated 3D math. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.